Microservices are all the buzz, but like most buzzwords, you're going to have to separate the fact from the fiction and the buzz from the hype. Because often the hype often clouds what's real and what's not so real. So what about microservices? Like anything in IT, the concepts are easy to understand. The devil is always in the details. Microservices in general is an architecture that basically takes a large, called a monolith, service and breaks it down into small shareable components. In a traditional monolith design, all the functionality is placed into a single process. This process is then instantiated over multiple servers that use this process. This results in code being instantiated across servers whether the code is run or not. A microservices architecture breaks this down into smaller chunks of code that is instantiated across servers as needed. So what exactly is a monolithic service and how was it called? You probably already use monolithic services, you just don't have a name for them. You call this kind of service from your application and you've done it a million times. This service seems to do everything. In this example, making a database connection and writing and executing a SQL statement and perhaps processing a result set. All of the functionality here takes place in one large service. Not a horrible thing, but a microservices architecture would break each individual functionality into its own small service, a microservice. The application then uses microservices instead of a larger monolith service. Typically, the application would call an API that would act as a controller, a traffic cop if you will. This API would conceivably call an individual API for each microservice that needs to be used. Sounds easy, right? Well, yes and no. The concept is straightforward and easy to understand, but as you can imagine, it's not the perpetual silver bullet. As a matter of fact, it's not even recommended for most organizations. It's up to you to determine if you can get any hard benefits from using microservices. Most agree that there's no hard definition for microservices, but most agree there are properties that make them up. First, each part should be able to be replaced independently from each other. Also, Microservices are built around business needs and functionalities. Microservices also have smart endpoints and dumb pipes. Pipes don't know what they're doing, only where they're going. Next, components act individually, avoiding the ESB model. Buses are bad in a microservices architecture. Database management is decentralized, and infrastructure is automated when using microservices. And true to DevOps, microservices are continuously delivered. And that's not all. Instead of a monolith having code to do everything, microservices have a single responsibility. They only do one thing. Microservices are object-oriented, like most other things that you write. And instead of having a bunch of code, microservices are small. They're only designed and built to do one thing. Microservices are also monitored. This monitoring and logging are part of the deal when using microservices. A monolithic service architecture does not attempt to network each service. This is not the case in a microservices architecture. Here, microservices are clustered. Each small piece acts independently of each other, and each piece is deployed on the cluster.